Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Princess Zara Aga Khan, members of the Aga Khan University Board of Trustees, President Firoz Rasul, President Designate Suleiman Shahbuddin, Aga Khan University Hospital CEO Dr. Shahid Shafi, our generous donors and distinguished guests, Assalamu Alaikum. It is our great pleasure for us to welcome our guests this evening from across the globe to the ceremony to name the Aga Khan University Hospital's new private wing complex, the Princess Zara Pavilion, in honor of Princess Zara Aga Khan. We are delighted that you could join us for this very special occasion. I would like to express our warm welcome to all the guests who are present with us here in Karachi, as well as those who are joining us virtually from around the world. We are grateful for your presence. Reflecting the ethos of the Aga Khan University, at the Princess Zara Pavilion, our patients and their families experience world-class care from, from diagnosis until discharge with exceptional levels of comfort, discretion, and care. To begin the program, I request Meher Angez Hassam, a student in the School of Nursing and Midwifery, to recite from the Holy Quran. Translation and hold fast all together by the rope which God stretches out for you. And be not divided among yourselves. And remember with gratitude God's favor on you. For ye were enemies, he joined your hearts in love, so that by his grace you became brethren. Sadaq Allah Al-Azim Jazak Allah I would now like to invite President Firoz Rasul to deliver the welcome address. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Princess Zara Aga Khan members of the university's board of trustees, president-designate Suleiman Shahabuddin, the Aga Khan University Hospital CEO, Dr. Shahid Shafi, our esteemed donors from around the world, leaders, faculty, and staff, and distinguished guests. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. Assalamu alaikum, and thank you so much to all of you for joining us to celebrate the naming of the Princess Zara Pavilion. For more than two decades, Princess Zara Aga Khan has been working to expand access to outstanding healthcare and education in Asia and Africa through the agencies of the Aga Khan Development Network. 
countless people have benefited from her knowledge, her wisdom, and her dedication to serving those in need as a member of the network's highest boards and as a member of the Aga Khan University's Board of Trustees, together with a variety of other leadership positions within the AKDN. We are very honored to have Princess Zara with us today from Geneva, Switzerland. I would like to express our deep gratitude to Princess Zara for presiding over this ceremony and for lending her name to this healthcare facility. In naming the new private wing, the Princess Zara Pavilion, we recognize the tremendous impact that Princess Zara has had and continues to have here in Pakistan and across the world. The origins of the building in which we are gathered today date back nearly a decade. The hospital's original private wing was then nearly, by then nearly 30 years old. As technology and best practices progressed, we realized that to ensure our service and hospitality matched international standards and an entirely new building would be required. The Princess Zara Pavilion is that new structure. It is the result of a globe-spanning collaborative effort to reimagine what an inpatient hospital facility can be and it is both a venue for the delivery of world-class care and a welcoming oasis of comfort, beauty, calm for patients and their family members. Contributors to the pavilion come from far and wide. The renowned architecture firm of Payette of Boston, Arcop from Karachi, the Serena Hotels, volunteers from the time and knowledge Nazarana in multiple countries, local and international consultants and craftspeople, and our own in-house team of architects, engineers, and construction managers all played an essential role. We are especially grateful to Prince Amin Aga Khan for his deep interest in the pavilion and his invaluable guidance in the interior design. When we presented this project to our donors, the response was an outpouring of generosity that brought together Pakistanis and members of the Pakistani diaspora from Karachi to Houston, Texas, to Los Angeles, California. In fact, almost half of the funds necessary for the construction were provided by our donors with the remainder coming from the university. To all those whose gifts made the Princess Zara Pavilion possible, I say thank you. We could not have done this without you. Above all, the pavilion reflects the vision of the university's chancellor, His Highness the Aga Khan, who at every step of the journey urged and inspired us to new heights. In designing the pavilion, we, pay, we paid close attention to the patient experience because hospitals can be forbidding places. We made sure that the pavilion welcomes you with open arms. It gives patients privacy, space, light, access to the outdoors, and the ability to control their environment with the touch of an iPad. Its restaurant, lounges, courtyards, and other features make family visits easy and comfortable. Its appreciation for the work of local artisans, local materials, and, and the history of Islamic architecture roots it in, in its context and humanizes the entire facility. And while the pavilion represents something new in the history of the Aga Khan University Hospital, it is closely linked to the surrounding campus by a shared architectural, architectural vocabulary. We also took great pains to ensure <clears throat> that the building is equipped 
with the latest technology and facilitates the delivery of world-class patient care across its five floors and 85 patient beds. We built specially equipped rooms for seriously ill patients. We implemented a central monitoring system to enable constant monitoring of patients' vital signs and created a system of pneumatic tubes to allow the rapid delir delivery of medications from our pharmacy and took many other steps to support high quality care. The result of all this planning, this careful consideration is a facility that sets a new standard of excellence in Pakistan and in the wider region. That is important for the pavilion's patients, but also no less important for the country. Because when you raise the bar, as we have done here, you will inspire others to set their sights higher. And eventually, that lifts standards far beyond our hospital walls. This is the last event of its kind that I will have the honor of attending as the president of the Aga Khan University. I would therefore like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all the university's donors. AKU is stronger today than it has ever been, and its contributions to the societies it serves are more consequential than ever before. That is because of you and your generosity. You have much to be proud of. We all have much to be proud of. The Princess Zara Pavilion is the latest in a long line of inspiring efforts to improve the quality of life in Pakistan and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, President Rasool. We have many guests with us today from inside and outside of Pakistan who have not yet had a chance to visit the Princess Sara Pavilion. For their benefit, we will now show a short video that showcases this beautiful new facility. I would now like to invite Mr. Farouk Saleh, who is speaking on behalf of all the generous donors to the Princess Zara Pavilion, to deliver his remarks. Princess Zara Aga Khan, members of the Aga Khan University Board of Trustees, President Firoz Rasul, President Designate Suleiman Shabuddin, Aga Khan University Hospital CEO Dr. Shahid Shafi, 
my fellow donors, leaders, faculty, and staff of the university, distinguished guests. It is a great pleasure for my wife, Tasneem, and I to have been invited to speak on behalf of all the donors who have contributed to the development of this significant project, the Princess Zara Pavilion at the Aga Khan University Hospital. I would like to begin by thanking Princess Zara Aga Khan for gracing this ceremony. Princess Zara, your affiliation with the private wing demonstrates the importance and impact this building has on our community. It is a true honor to be associated with it. I've been extremely fortunate in my life and career and am blessed to be born into a wonderful family with a long history of service and philanthropy. My father passed away when he was relatively young. On the passing away of my mother, when I returned to Karachi, I felt the need to do something in Pakistan to honor and continue my parents' and my grandparents' legacy. I'm certain each of the donors has his own story, but what connects us all is our desire to contribute to something enduring and meaningful. Our donation was given with the unwavering confident, confidence that a project carried out in the name of Daga Khan would be executed to the highest standards and make a significant difference in people's lives. Without doubt, our trust has been rewarded. I've been living in Houston for a long time now and I believe that here or anywhere in the world, the Princess Zara Pavilion would stand out as a state-of-the-art health facility, beautifully designed for comfort, warmth, and healing. We are grateful to everyone involved in designing and constructing the pavilion. I am very proud that my family name is inscribed upon the new private wing and the atrium of the building. I believe I speak for all donors when I say that it gives us great pride and joy to know that the new private wing will be a place of hope and healing for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saleh, for your inspiring words. We would now like to invite our chief guest, Princess Zara Aga Khan, to deliver her address. President Firoz Rasul, President-designate Suleiman Shahabuddin, Aga Khan University Hospital CEO, Dr. Shahid Shafi, generous donors and supporters, leaders, faculty, and staff of the university. It is an honor to share this occasion with all of you today. I only wish that we could all be together in person. First and foremost, I would like to thank the extraordinarily generous individuals and families whose philanthropy made it possible to construct this remarkable facility. The fact that this project has engaged a wide and varied donor community demonstrates how the Khan University is widely appreciated. It is an honor for me that this building should bear my name, as does the original pavilion, which was constructed over 20 years ago in Nairobi. These are buildings that offer not only an exceptional level of care to patients, but also a high level of comfort, services, and amenities to they and their families. The entire team responsible for its design and construction deserve congratulations, and every single person responsible for its day-to-day -day operations should be proud to work here. As a result of all their efforts, Pakistanis no longer need to leave their country or their families or to bear the expense and anxiety associated with doing so in order to access such care. Providing care in a facility such as this pavilion is, however, only one aspect of the work of the Yoga Khan University Hospital, 
where, in fact, one out of every 10 inpatients at the hospital earns less than 300 rupees, or two dollars a day. We are able to provide surgeries and other complex care to these patients thanks to the financial support of our patient welfare program. In 2019, the AKU hospitals provided over 3 billion rupees, or 20 million dollars, in patient welfare to more than 800,000 patients in Pakistan. A significant portion of welfare funding is provided by our donors, and we are deeply grateful for their support. Yet 75% of patient welfare is financed from the hospital's own revenues. The pavilion is an important source of revenue for the hospital, and thus it is an important contribution in our ability to serve the disadvantaged segment of the population. In this context, I would note that while the pavilion offers patients un an unmatched level of privacy during their recovery, they are treated by the same surgeons and specialists in the same operating rooms and facilities as other hospital patients, including our patients and welfare recipients. If we widen our angle of vision, we find further evidence of the ethos of public service that distinguishes the hospital, the Aga Khan University, and the Aga Khan Development Network as a whole. During the pandemic, the university has trained tens of thousands of doctors and nurses at public and private hospitals in infection control and caring for COVID patients. It has provided crucial advice to the Sindh and national governments at the highest level, and it has played a key role in assessing the effectiveness of new diagnostics, treatments and vaccines. At the same time, the hospital has cared for thousands of severely ill COVID patients vaccinated tens of thousands of individuals, tested hundreds of thousands of people for the virus, and tracked the spread of new variants. Together, the AKU Health System and the Aga Khan Health Services constitute a nationwide network that cares for more than two and a half million people in a typical year. Meanwhile, the university has addressed outbreaks of HIV AIDS and drug-resistant typhoid, worked to stamp out polio, and help to improve the quality of care in government health facilities in low-income communities. Its researchers are using artificial intelligence and stem cell science to develop cutting-edge tools for fighting malnutrition, breast cancer, and genetic disorders. AKU also expands access to high-quality healthcare and education through its academic programs, which graduate hundreds of doctors, nurses, and teachers every year. I know that you know this because you helped to make it possible. We could not make such a difference in so many lives without our donors, whose support has continued even amid the hardships of the pandemic. So I want to thank all of you for your generosity, whether you've helped AKU to build buildings, purchased advanced technologies, launch new ap academic programs, provide scholarships to low-income students, or enable access to healthcare through patient welfare. Your gifts not only change lives, they demonstrate what can be achieved when generous people from different backgrounds come together to pursue ambitious goals. Thank you. Thank you, Princess Sarah. Your leadership and compassion are an inspiration for all of us. I would now like to invite Dr. Shahid Shafi, CEO of the Aga Khan University Hospital, to deliver the closing remarks. Princess Zara, uh, President Firoz Rasul, President Designate Suleiman Shahabuddin, President of the National Council, Hafiz Shir Ali, trustees, and our esteemed donors. <clears throat> On behalf of the physicians, nurses, and the staff of the hospital, I would like to thank Princess Zara for celebrating this historic occasion with us. This ceremony reminds us of the values embodied in this institution by His Highness himself, which is an unwavering commitment to pursue excellence 
in everything that we do. But that is only possible with the support of generous donors like yourself. You have enabled us to revolutionize the quality of healthcare in Pakistan and elsewhere. So thank you for believing in AKU. I returned to AKU just a few months ago after spending nearly 30 years in the US. But I can sell, tell you confidently that I have never seen a facility of this caliber anywhere in the US. And like Princess Zara said earlier, the people of Pakistan now don't have to leave their home, their families behind, to seek care elsewhere. They can get it right here. My association with AKU is nearly four decades long as I started in the inaugural class of the medical college here in 1983. And over these four decades, I've seen the institution grow. When the hospital started in 1985, it had 10 beds in the emergency room. Today it has 60 beds. We have gone from 12 critical care beds to 64 critical care beds in all specialties. We have gone from eight operating rooms to 22 operating rooms from a single outpatient clinic to multiple buildings dedicated to outpatient care from less than 200 inpatients to nearly 750 inpatient beds and from less than 50 doctors who started here when I was a student to over 1,000 highly qualified world-class specialists that are dedicated to providing the highest quality care. And now this building, which I believe is a jewel on, on our campus. But far more important than the buildings are the people. Are the people that AKU has invested in over the last four decades. During this time, AKU has trained thousands of doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, and hospital managers who are now serving all over Pakistan and of course elsewhere in the world as well. But we take a special pride in empowering women, especially women from low and middle income families who have been able to lift themselves and their families up out of poverty through the education they received right here on this campus. And through that education, the job opportunities that they were able to avail both on this campus, outside this campus in Pakistan, in the Middle East, and in the West. I myself am a product of AKU, as I mentioned. And I can safely say that I won't be where I am in my career today if it was not for the education that I received right here at AKU nearly 40 years ago. That foundation that was laid right here at AKU enabled me to compete and succeed at some of the finest institutions in the US, including the Johns Hopkins University and the University of Pennsylvania. And I'm not the only one. You may not know this, but at this point, The Dean of the Medical College, Dr. Adil Haider, is an alum of this institution. The Dean of the School of Nursing, Dr. Rosina Karmaliani, is also an alum of this institution. The Dean of the upcoming Faculty of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Anjum Halai, is also an alum of this institution. And we have other alums serving in all multiple leadership roles around the campus, and I see some of them sitting back there. But here at AKU, we, we measure our success not simply by physical structure or by the people we trained, but we want to measure our success through the lens of the patients and their families and the care that they experience here. And again, I'm very proud to say 
that the quality of care that we provide here is reflected in our patient satisfaction scores that meet or exceed international benchmarks. I will leave you with this one final thought. While Princess Zara Pavilion is clearly a jewel in the landscape of AKU on this campus, it is not meant to stand alone. It is meant to embody excellence in everything that we do, but it is also meant to inspire others to pursue excellence. And for that, we need your support. You need your continued support. And we want to thank you for everything that you have done for AKU to date. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's an honor to host you here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shafi. This brings us to the conclusion of this naming ceremony. To our guests attending virtually, thank you so much for joining us for this very special event. Have a wonderful rest of your day. For our guests in Karachi, we have organized a tour of the ground floor of the pavilion. In order to adhere to COVID protocols, our tour guides, standing here, will be taking people in groups of five. Once again, thank you so much for joining us for this memorable event. Have a great evening.